स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडे लेक्चर इन टूडे लेक्चर विल कंटिन्यू आवर डिस्कशन ऑन द सोल्यूशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन आइटम प्रॉब्लम इफ यू रिमेंबर वी सॉ दैट द क्वांटम मैकेनिकल सोल्यूशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन आइटम दैट वी अपटेंड क्लोजली एग्रीज विथ द बोर्स एटमिक मॉडल इन पर्टिकुलर द एनर्जी लेवल एक्सप्रेशन एज वेल एज द मैक्सिमम probability uh, the the radius at which the electron will is uh, going to be found with maximum probability that turned out to be the bohr radius for 1s orbital while the bohr's atomic model uh, had good number of agreements with the quantum mechanical formulation of hydrogen atom that we had in uh, last few lectures but then there are some cases where the bohr's atomic model could not explain some experimental results for example the emission spectrum of hydrogen atom in the presence of external field such as magnetic field or electric field could not be explained by bohr's atomic model today in this lecture we'll discuss this particular effect in particular we are going to discuss the zeeman effect or the emission spectra of hydrogen atom when it is subjected to a magnetic field an external magnetic field now the point is why would the atom that is hydrogen atom interact with this magnetic field or uh, would have any uh, term of uh, any uh, relation with magnetic field why would, would the magnetic field be able to perturb our system that is the hydrogen atom to do that uh, let us uh, see what we know from uh, classical mechanics we know that if there is a charged particle which goes around a loop a charged particle with uh, charge q and uh, charge q and mass m if it if it uh, goes around a loop it actually creates a magnetic dipole moment and this magnetic dipole moment is the vector is given by this relation where q is the charge r and v are the uh, displacement and the velocity vector and this is a cross product of the two vectors now we can rewrite this by introducing a mass term both in denominator and numerator and in particular we do this we rewrite this expression in this particular way where ma m is the mass of this particle which goes around this loop now if you look this expression closely you will see that this is displacement vector and this is linear momentum vector so the vector product of these two vectors would give me the angular momentum vector which is now multiplied by the charge of the particle and the mass of the particle so whenever a charged particle shows an shows a circular motion it develops a dipole moment magnetic dipole moment which is given by this expression q divided by 2m multiplied by the angular momentum vector now this is what we know from classical mechanics now if i have to formulate this in in quantum mechanical sense so that means the operator corresponding to this dipole mo uh, dipole moment would turn out be so if you remember in quantum in quantum mechanics the postulate number 2 suggested that for every classical observable we can write the quantum mechanical operator so the quantum mechanical operator that i can write for this system is simply this l operator because l the orbit the orbital angular momentum operator corresponds to this l vector the orbital angular momentum vector remember this is a uh, vector operator and we have already discussed quite a few things about this uh, angular momentum operator now we have this magnetic dipole moment that is already present 
in our atom. Why? Because in our atom the electron goes around the nucleus in a circular path. Now, since the electron is already going around and it has developed a uh, dipole moment. Now, if I subject my atom to an external magnetic field uh, with field strength of B, then this magnetic dipole moment that is that has been that is being generated by the orbiting electron will interact with this external magnetic field. The word by the very fact that the electron is is a charged particle which is orbiting around the nucleus develops a magnetic dipole moment and this dipole moment interacts with the external magnetic field. As long as you do not have this external magnetic field, the dipole moment is there in the uh, atom, but it does not show its effect or it does not manifest in any of its properties. But when we apply the external magnetic field, now the manifestation of this dipole moment operator that is that, that is already there in the atom comes out. So, this is what we are going to discuss. Now, in the absence of this external magnetic field, the Hamiltonian of power system which is now hydrogen atom is given by the, the kinetic energy of the electron plus the potential energy of the between the electron and the nucleus, which is given by a coulombic uh, uh, interaction. Now, this is the original Hamiltonian that we had and you see uh, when even when this electron was going around uh, this orbit uh, uh, the, the nucleus, it had this dipole moment, but it was not being uh, visible in this Hamiltonian yet. But when I apply this magnetic field external magnetic field B, the this magnetic dipole interacts with the magnetic field and it creates a new kind of interaction which is a kind of a potential energy interaction. So, this V magnetic or we write V magnetic which is the potential energy that is coming out because of the presence of the magnetic field and uh, which is now interacting with the electron. Uh, electrons dipole moment because electron is orbiting the nucleus. This potential energy is, is given by uh, minus mu dot b. So, mu and uh, b, so we are writing here the uh, scalar product between the two vectors. If we apply this magnetic field only along z direction, so, therefore, only I have, I have only B z term uh, active B x and B y are 0 and since I have this dot product here. So, this would simply mean that I have mu z B z. This is now the potential energy that I am getting from classical uh, mechanics description of the system. Now, corresponding to this potential energy, I can write down the potential energy operator V m. What would that be? I see that this is the classical uh, mechanics uh, relation. So, the potential energy would be simply mu z operator multiplied by B z, where here B z is simply the external uh, magnetic field, the strength of the magnetic field that I can when I am doing the experiment, I can tune. So, now this operator has become, so I since B z is a constant that depends on the experiment and mu z is already you can see here q divided by 2 m and instead of writing L operator, I write L z operator. So, this is the quantum mechanical uh, description of the mu operator. Now, the potential energy arising because of the interaction of the orbiting electron with the external magnetic field is given by this term. Now, when you do not have this magnetic field, this Hamiltonian is sub sufficient because this talks about the kinetic energy of the electron and the potential energy between the uh, potential energy corresponding to the attraction between the electron and the nucleus. But when you have magnetic field, then you must add another term. So, this term is your V m or the magnetic field interaction that we have here. So, now we have a new Hamiltonian. So, this was the original Hamiltonian, let us call this H 0 
and this is the new term that we are adding and why is it being added because I have applied the external magnetic field. Now in this new Hamiltonian what would be the energy? So the in other words what would be the expectation value of this corresponding to this Hamiltonian operator. So to obtain that we would simply now write uh, the expectation uh, value corresponding to this operator where we know that the wave function total wave function of this elect uh, the hydrogen atom is given by this psi n l n we already know their functional forms. So, this is what would be the expectation value or the, the energy expectation value corresponding to the Hamiltonian operator or the, the average value of the energy. So, now we see that this Hamiltonian has two terms. So, the first term plus the second term which is now Now look at the first term. What does it? What is this? I know this i n l m is an eigenfunction of s zero, and in fact the value of this. So since this is an eigen uh, eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian, so at, at the end I would actually get the energy, and this energy I'm writing it as e n l m. So this is the hydrogen atoms energy levels that we already know. But if just to remind you, hydrogen atoms energy did not depend on l and m it had only n dependence because we saw that for nth n level there are n square number of different eigenfunctions. So, this has n square uh, this is n square fold degenerate and it only dep the energy depends only on n or the principal quantum number. So, I am just writing instead of writing n l m I am just writing n e n. Now, let us look at this new term. So, I have this v m which is which is given by uh, this expression here. So, to uh, to take care of that I see uh, it's, I would have to put this term over here. So, let us do this I see that V z is a constant because this is the applied magnetic field Q is the charge of the particle and my particle at the moment is is electron which is going around. So, therefore, Q is for in the in the case of electron Q is minus E and M the mass of the particle is mass of the electron. When I put Q as minus E, so this term becomes plus. So, therefore, I have B z E which is the mass the charge of the electron divided by 2 mass times mass of the electron and this is now the operator. So, I would actually do this I will keep only the operator part inside the integral outside I keep I brought the constants outside. Now, let us look at this relation. The question that I ask now is that is this psi n l m which is the eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian of hydrogen atom is it an eigenfunction of L z operator? The answer is yes because psi n l m has a radial part and an angular part. The radial part does not get influenced by the L z operator, but the angular part which is the spherical which is a spherical harmonics this is actually the uh, also an eigenfunction of L z operator. So, when L z operator acts on psi n l m one of these uh, eigenfunctions of hydrogen atom. So, the result is simply m h bar psi n l m because you see this psi n l m will have a radial part and an angular part and this angular part the spherical harmonics is an eigenfunction of this L z operator. So, therefore, the result of this is m h bar where m is the quantum number and then I still have 
since I have already applied uh, made the application of LZ operator in this function, I have a MH bar and the function itself and then when you see this overlap integral since I n L m is normalized. So, this integral becomes 1 and therefore, I am left with the terms is that E n plus E divided by 2 m E h bar m beta z. Now, look at this term. So, I have E m. So, this m is the magnetic quantum number of the corresponding to the state. This m E is the mass of electron, E is the charge of electron, h bar is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi and 2 is a constant. So, I see these all these constants if I use them I give a new name to this and this has a famous name this is called Bohr magneton. whose value is given as 9.274 into 10 to the power minus 24 joule per tesla. So, this is Bohr magneton. Uh, so, we have this new constant beta which is known as the Bohr magneton given by this value. Apart from this constant I have this m which is the magnetic quantum number which depends on the state of the system and then B z which is the strength of the applied external magnetic field. So, the noun ma what have I got from this exercise is that I have got an expression for the energy levels of hydrogen atom when I subject this hydrogen atom to an external magnetic field. Let us uh, write down this new energy E prime which is the old energy the energy of hydrogen atom in the absence of magnetic field plus beta m b z where beta is my Bohr magneton, b z is the external field that I am applying m is the quantum number. Now, you look at here n the energy level dependent only on n quantum number the principal a quantum number, but when I apply magnetic field in addition to this n dependence I have also m dependence, but as you know I cannot define my m without defining L because m is defined only after I have defined my L value. So, therefore, in this case I give these indices to the energy levels as that E prime the new energy level that is the energy level of the hydrogen atom in the presence of external magnetic field would have dependence on n, l and m all. Let us see we know that in the absence of magnetic field. So, we have this uh, energy level corresponding to 1 s orbital, then we have this energy level corresponding to 2 s orbital and the energy levels corresponding to 2 p orbital. So, this is uh, 2 s and 2 p are degenerate only for hydrogen atom or any hydrogen like atom. This kind of degeneracy that the energy levels are independent of or orbital angular momentum L is, is manifestation of the, uh, the fact that we have only one electron which is going around the central potential. So, if I had more than one electron this degeneracy that is the degeneracy between 2 s and 2 p orbitals will be lifted. But in any case for hydrogen atom this is the energy levels that I have. So, this three levels for of 2 p are different by their magnetic quantum number m. So, m is 0, m is plus 1, m is minus 1 all right. Now, in this case so, hydrogen atom in the absence of magnetic field in this case when I record the emission spectra of it I would actually see one kind one emission line and that emission line will happen at this energy difference let us call this E. So, if I plot this energy uh, the, the spectra corresponding to this emission. So, I would get one line at the energy E which will corresponding to the energy difference between these two, two levels. I of course, know the energy level of the uh, energy of this level uh, by which is uh, minus uh, E 0 divided by uh, 4 which is n square that is minus 3.4 electron volt and this energy level is minus 13.6 electron volt 
for hydrogen atom. Now, I would get in the absence of a magnetic field, I will get one line here in the emission spectra. What happens when I apply external magnetic field? When I apply external magnetic field, my energy levels become E n that means the original energy plus some other term. Let us see how it changes. For example, when I see look at the effect of uh, uh, 1s label, the 1s label will simply remain unchanged. Why? Because 1s label, 1s orbital has m quantum number as 0. So, E n plus m is 0, 0 into this constant is 0. So, therefore, this energy level did not change 1s. What about the 2s label? In case of 2s label also, I would say since 2s level has m value 0 because L is 0 and therefore m is 0. So, I get 2s level over here. What about 2p? So, I had these 3 2p lines, one corresponding to m is 0, uh, plus 1, uh, minus 1, these 3 levels. So, I have 3 levels. Let us consider uh, first the energy of this that level where m value is 0 when for 2p level. So, when m value is 0, so this term is 0, so therefore, this remained unchanged. When m is plus 1, so I have the energy E n which is starting from this energy plus a factor. So, this corresponds to m equals plus 1, this corresponds to m equals 0 and when m is minus 1, you would see the, the new energy is the energy of the cis uh, uh, level in the absence of magnetic field which was this and then the term that I have here. What is the energy of this? So, this is still uh, E 2 because this is E 2 minus beta B z and this is E 2 minus plus beta B z where beta is the Bohr magneton which is a constant and B z is the external field. So, the energy levels are splitting by beta B z the magnetic levels. Now, when I record the emission spectra in this case, I now have a different situation here what did I have? What I had 1 1 is level and 4 in uh, levels in this case and I see a 1 line. But here in this case what I see is that I would get uh, of course, uh, I would get one line that is coming from here to uh, 1 s level, another emission from here and the third emission. So, so far we are discussing only from the 2 p level because there exist some selection rules that will come to when we are discussing in more detail about spectroscopy. So, here what we would get is that we will get, we are getting 3 different uh, emission lines. If I plot them, if you not notice this energy uh, line will appear at the same value of E that it appeared in the absence of external magnetic field. Why? Because this energy level corresponds to m equals 0 of 2 p level and when m equals 0 the energy did not change. So, whatever the energy was here that energy would still remain here in the presence of magnetic field. Now, when I look at m equals minus 1 uh, emission from m, m equals minus 1, I see that I will get another line whereas, E minus at E minus beta B z and then from m equals plus level I will get another line at E plus beta B z. So, what I see is that instead of observing one emission line in the like in the absence of magnetic field, I am observing 3 emission lines in the presence of magnetic field. So, this is uh, in the presence of magnetic field and this is in the absence of magnetic field. Now, the difference is that when I apply magnetic field, my energy level starts splitting and 
another important point is that I can control now the splitting between these lines. How can I do that? Because I see where while beta is, is, a, is a constant that I do not have any control over, but what I have a good control over is the value of the external magnetic field. So, if I wish to have this energy separation by, a, by uh, some value, I can always calculate this beta B z value or the value of the magnitude of the external magnetic field that I would apply to this system, so that I can obtain the desired splitting. So, for example, if I wish to get uh, 1 centimeter inverse uh, splitting, I want uh, this one, uh, the splitting between the two lines as, as 1 centimeter inverse. So, this in this case it is simply beta into B z and the value of B z is uh, 1 centimeter inverse divided by the value of beta. So, I, I have to convert since I know beta value in uh, in Joule per Tesla, I must convert this 1 centimeter inverse to uh, the Joule unit and when I do that you would find actually the value of the magnetic field which, which would come around about 2 uh, uh, Tesla of magnetic field. So, depending if I increase the magnetic field, the spacing between these two lines uh, would, would increase. If I decrease the magnetic field, it would uh, decrease. So, what we learned in uh, today's class is that if I we had correct formulation of uh, the hydrogen atom which is given by the quantum mechanical formulation that we uh, carried out in last few classes, we are able to explain the splitting of emission line in the presence of magnetic field or known as Zeeman effect. Remi uh, to my, uh, rem remind you that this Zeeman effect could not be explained uh, by Bohr's atomic model because of the sum of the flaws that we had discussed in Bohr's atomic model in, uh, in our earlier class. We will continue our discussion uh, in the next class to see what more effects we have we still have in this uh, hydrogen atom problem. The, this that they will be the topics of our discussion in our next classes. Thank you for your attention.